In this video, we'll talk about absorption of water. But before we take up this step in detail, let us talk about how water moves. There are actually two processes. Suppose we just draw a small root here. This is the stem part and here is the leaf. When we are talking of water transport, that means from soil, the water has to first go into the root, then it will be conducted upward into the leaf and other parts also. So we have divided this entire process into two steps. First is absorption of water and this takes place from soil to the root that means through root hair and second once this water has reached into the root that is up to the xylem then it has to be transported upwards which is known as ascent of sap so these are the two stages in which the water from the soil absorbed by root hair and then conducted by xylem upwards so we are talking of absorption of water first so absorption absorption of water through root hair this is our step number one let us first see a simple diagram so that we are able to understand how this water is going to move in these are the root hair we are drawing the epidermal cells of root this is the root hair and then there are cortical cells cortical cells are parenchymatous cells which are loosely arranged and in between them there are intercellular spaces these spaces cell wall all these structures are going to help us in understanding this process then this comes to the next or the innermost layer of the cortex which is known as endodermis in endodermis we know that there are casparian strips casparian strips are made up of suberin so this part represents the cortex and cortical cells are parenchymatous this particular layer of cell is the innermost layer of cortex and it is known as endodermis in endodermis the cells are barrel shaped and there is a thickening on the side wall of suberin so we will have to draw this thickening here and we also know that there are certain cells where this thickening is absent those cells are called the passage cells so this is the thickening of suberin suberin is a material which is impervious to water and that is why these passage cells are very very important so these cells are called passage cells they are the cells of endodermis but are the ones where suberin layer that is casparian strips are missing so this is suberin and the layer is known as casparian strip it actually acts as a barrier for the movement of water now inner to endodermis again there are compact cells which we call the pericycle cells inner to pericycle is phloem so if we just represent these with the sieve plates we will be able to identify or differentiate there are parenchyma cells also this is phloem then if we are talking about a dicot then there is cambium here and inner to cambium is our xylem these are the xylem vessels which are going to actually take the water upwards. So let us label this. This part is the phloem part. This strip is cambium. And this particular tissue is xylem. When we say absorption of water, the water from the soil has to go in 
up to these xylem vessels and then this xylem will be able to conduct it upwards. So we are talking about this particular process. How does water move in? The movement of water, movement of water takes place by two means. First is known as epoplast. Epoplast movement takes place through the cell wall or intercellular spaces. In this, the water does not cross membrane. So, water does not cross a membrane. Now, when we say does not cross a membrane, that means membrane is plasma membrane. That means water is not going into the cell. The same thing can be written or understood as if water goes in, it is ultimately becoming a part of cytoplasm or cell sap, that is a solution. So we can also term or explain this as movement of water without forming a solution. And this movement takes place through cell wall. So movement is through cell wall or intercellular space. Now, let us show this path first and then we will come to the other path that is symplast. If water from the soil is moving in, this water goes into the root hair by osmosis and then it will move through this cell we use a darker color so that we are able to trace it clearly. It goes into the root hair. From root hair, it is coming into this intercellular space. Then through the cell wall and intercellular space and cell wall and intercellular space, it has come up to the passage cells. If it goes here, then there is a barrier that is the Casparian strip. So, most of the water which moves in comes through this path because there is no membrane as a barrier or it is not required to cross a membrane. This is epoplast movement. This one with blue line which we have represent, uh, represented here is epoplast movement. In this case, we have not seen water going into any cell. It has gone either through the cell wall or through intercellular spaces and ultimately it is going to come to endodermis. If it comes to those cells where there is Casparian strip, there is a barrier, it will not cross that barrier and if it comes to passage cell, we will see how it crosses this passage cell. Now let us talk about the other movement that is the symplast. This was epoplast and we can say the maximum movement of water takes place through epoplast means. Second is known as symplast. In symplast, water gets into the cell. So here water moves through the cells. That means it is going to go into the cell, will become a part of cytoplasm or cell sap and then will move from one cell to another through plasmodesmata. So let us show this movement now. Same water from soil is first taken by the root hair, again by the process of osmosis. Now the water goes into the cell, that means it is crossing this membrane of the cell. From this cell, through plasmodesmata, it comes to the next cell, then next, then next, and ultimately it is going to come up to the same endodermis passage cell. So whether we are talking of epoplast movement, that is through intercellular spaces and cell wall, or symplast movement, water has reached up to the Casparian strip or endodermis. Now, whether it is coming from epoplast or symplast, it has to go into the cell here. So, when we say maximum movement of water is through epoplast, it is up to endodermis. And 
through endodermis if it has to go it will first become a part of the cell it will go inside the cell and then it will again come out when it comes out from the endodermis through these passage cells that then again it can show apoplast movement that means it can go through the intercellular spaces or cell walls and it is going to reach up to the xylem and now water has gone into xylem in the xylem there are going to be pits so xylem receives this water now the water has reached up to xylem now let us quickly go over these two processes one more time apoplast movement from soil which takes place where the water moves through intercellular spaces and cell wall it comes to this barrier layer that is endodermis which has casparian strips here the water which has reached up to this point through apoplast will have to cross this passage cell by becoming a part of the cytoplasm or sap that means symplast and again when it comes on the inner side it can show apoplast movement second is symplast which is not the major part because it is time consuming through membrane when water moves it takes little time but when it comes through root hair into the cortical cells from one cell to the next cell it is going to go through plasmodesmata so here the movement is through the cell and the water becomes a part of the sac or solution and crosses the endodermal passage cells and when this water moves in it again can go through the cells that means it can show symplast movement also and this water is also going to reach the xylem so whether it is apoplast movement or symplast movement in both the cases soil water reaches up to the xylem vessels but only thing that we have to remember is maximum movement or absorption of water takes place through apoplast mechanism and less goes through symplast so this is comparatively less but one thing which we have to remember is that in cortex apoplast symplast both take place through endodermis it is only symplast and then again on the inner side it is through apoplast as well as symplast movement so now the water from the soil has reached up to the conducting tissue that is xylem and now from this xylem it has to go up that means ascent of sac this movement is an osmosis which is a passive movement but when the cell receives this water then we know that water movement takes place from higher water potential to lower water potential so same thing if we have to explain in terms of water potential apoplast we don't have to talk about it because the water is not moving into the cell but let us talk about this symplast movement here it is soil water in soil water there are certain salts dissolved so it has a concentration and as compared to the cytoplasm or the sap its concentration is definitely less so soil water is hypotonic as compared to this root hair so in root hair it is hypertonic hypotonic water or hypotonic solution means here the water content is more as compared to this one so osmosis will take place from hypo to hyper water moves in so far no problem but now when we talk of this cell say we number this as 1 this cell as 2 this as 3 then how does the water move from cell 1 to 2 2 to 3 and so on now if we talk of movement between root hair cell and cell number 1 we will have to compare this this should be hypotonic and this one should be hypertonic then only water will move from root hair up to the or into the cell how does this receive water now here we are talking of some values just to understand we know 
the water potential of pure water is zero. This is not zero. It is going to be less than that. Say it is minus one. All solutions have water potential less than zero. Here it is say minus two. So from minus one to minus two. If it has to move from this to this, its water potential should be even low. How would water potential decrease? This cell actively absorbs ions from the surrounding cell. That means here the solute concentration is increasing and by taking those solutes in that is sodium ions or chloride ions it is reducing its water potential further say it becomes minus three so if we are comparing these two that is root hair and cell number one water moves from minus two to minus three that means higher water potential to lower water potential if we take cell two this is going to take even more number of ions. Its water potential goes even less. That means it becomes minus 4. So from minus 3 to minus 4 and to next and to next. This is how the water moves. So we can explain this in terms of water potential also. And that is required only when we are talking of symplast movement. In epoplast, this water potential thing is not going to be required because here the movement is through intercellular spaces and through cell wall. So first step is absorption of water. Next step is going to be how this xylem vessel conducts this water upwards which we call the ascent of